Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre. Now, we have barely had a few days of this new year 2021, and people have already decided that the musical of the year is Ratatouille the Musical. The Ratatouzical. To give you some backstory for this, this is something that started as a TikTok trend. Or so the young people tell me. Basically, one TikToker last year came up with the idea of a Ratatouille musical, and it sort of took off and became this trend where even big influencers were contributing towards it, and songwriters were coming up with songs for it, and then there were set designs, and there was graphic design for the poster, and there was choreography, and there was direction, and there were scenes, and there were people doing their own covers of the songs. It became this huge, crazy thing to the point that it achieved such mainstream recognition that my non-theatre friends were asking me about it and I was like, I don't know what this is. I had yet to board the Ratatouille hype train. This then got so crazy that a concert version of the show was then planned to benefit the Actors Fund, which is a charity that does amazing work for freelance performers and all of the Broadway community during this difficult time of shutdown. This particular concert then announced a crazy all-star cast and creative team that got me very excited about it and very interested to find out what I'd been missing all this time. What a great way for the Broadway community to involve its fans more in its creation and inception than for a show to reach fruition that was made by the fans just for the love of Broadway and for the love of Disney and for the love of rats, I guess. So I watched the concert, I filmed a whole reaction to it. If you haven't yet, go and check out that video on my channel. It's a lot. Today, what I thought I would do is give you my review of the show, what I thought about it and what I think about how the show is going to be able to go on and develop and what kind of future life it's gonna be able to have. But before we get to all that, this is what I thought about the concert version that we got to watch. Did I think Ratatouille was the show of all my dreams? So this was something that was filmed separately. All of the cast filmed themselves in their own homes, presumably separately, because we're still in a time of social distancing. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. I liked the way that these clips have been put together. It sort of paid homage to the show's original inception on TikTok with all of these portrait framings of people singing solos and dressed up looking crazy in their own homes. And that was how the show was structured for the most part, was just people had filmed themselves in this sort of self tape style, singing songs and doing scenes with the occasional cutaway to like a rat ensemble and some rat choreography and some video effects to sort of flesh it out and make it more engaging. I thought the way they brought everyone together was actually very clever. I think there was some decent chemistry between the cast members, even though they were in completely different places. I thought the duets worked well. I thought the interactions seemed very genuine. That's a sign of very good and very careful direction. A lot of the backgrounds that they used worked very well. All of the audio being put together was just flawless. I never noticed any problems with any of that in terms of how the vocals had been put with the band and it all brought together. It was a very polished and well-finished product. My biggest issue with the show is because obviously of the limitations of doing it filmed and it's not on a stage, was they had a tendency to gloss over some of the more juicy moments of the plot. We're not gonna do that, but it happened. Back to another song. And where I feel that really fell down is there was a particular moment where we rushed through maybe half an hour of some of the film's best plot points just to get to then another short scene, press conference that didn't have any songs. Then we go back to more narration and it really started to lose pace for me. And in a show that's only an hour long, it really can't afford to be losing pace like that. I liked most of the songs. I really liked the I Want number. I liked the Anyone Can Cook. I thought that was a really great hook. I loved that melody. I loved the You Are The Ratatouille or Remy The Ratatouille, whatever the lyrics were. Loved that whole melody every time it came back, every time it was referenced in a song before it happened. If anything, I wanted that finale song to go on longer. I know that's the big song that everyone knows from TikTok. I wanted more of that. More Remy the Ratatouille. Controversially, I did not love the tango. I know this has been really popular online and I liked the idea of it. I like having a tango there. I liked some of the lyrics, but I just wanted it to have more of a melodic hook that would really grab me and help me remember that song. I feel like I couldn't tell you how any of that went and I just finished watching it just now. In general, I feel for most of the songs, they were sort of put in at the most obvious places for you to have songs. It's sort of, he gets to Paris, he sings his I want song. There's tension, so we're gonna have a tense duet. I think there are more interesting ways to theatricalize the plot than by just doing it in the most obvious structure, if that makes sense. One moment where I started to see this was where you had Anton Ego singing with young Anton Ego and taking this beautiful scene from the film and theatricalizing it in a very clever way with a duet between the two of them. I thought that was really beautiful and a really clever way of theatricalizing the material. Now let's talk about the casting. 
The casting for this was ridiculously good. First of all, you have Andrew Barth Feldman and Kevin Chamberlain as Linguini and Gusto, who were both involved, I think, in TikToks before this had even happened to do with the show. They had already been, I think, dreamcast in these roles and they'd already helped create content for it and made performances of it. But they were fantastic in these roles. Not only did they really look like the animated characters that they were playing, uh, but they both had such great personalities and they brought such warmth and just brilliance to it. They're both incredible performers and they made it really dynamic and really fun to watch. Then Titus Burgess as Remy, unexpectedly perfect. I would never have thought of Titus Burgess for this role, but it made perfect sense once he did it because you need someone as Remy who is sort of willful and sassy, but at the same time also completely endearing and likable. And that is what Titus Burgess has. And he brings something of himself to every role that he plays. He also has that lovable quality that makes him a great Disney animal. Lest we not forget, he was Sebastian in The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <clears throat> Ashley Park was great in this. I thought I loved her French accent. Mary Tester, unexpectedly brilliant. Whoever pitched Mary Tester for this role deserves a medal. Whoever did all of this casting generally deserves medals. I love that it was as diverse as it was. I can't believe that Ratatouille is one of the more diverse musical cast we've seen for a Disney adaptation. Also a shout out to Wayne Brady, who was committing harder to being a rat than anyone has ever committed to being a rat. I liked all of the stagey Easter eggs and musical references that they put in as well. There were references to Six and to Joseph and to Les Mis and to Rent and to a chorus line. For the show to stand in its own right, I think it needs less of them. It started to feel a little bit like a crutch. And somewhere like the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, those would play very well and they'd be very funny. But where you have these parody shows in Edinburgh, I feel they can only go so far. You can never have your own mainstream success in somewhere like Broadway or in the West End if you're overly reliant on parodying other theatre shows. I loved the whole chorus line moment with Priscilla Lopez, but it did make it feel a little bit just like a parody show. Now, in terms of how this show would be able to actually get to the stage, lest we not forget, this is a Disney property, so it would have to be a production from Disney Theatrical, who are going to invest a huge amount of money in anything they produce, and they will want to make sure that it goes straight to Broadway and it looks very slick, very polished, very in line with the reputation of shows that have come before it. Recognizable family-friendly hits, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Frozen, Aladdin, big budget, big Broadway shows. I've seen a lot of people suggesting already that Ratatouille would have a better life off Broadway than perhaps on Broadway, and I think that depends about how they're going to be able to adapt the material and how they'd actually put it on stage, because you have this issue of rats alongside humans, and Titus Burgess is taller than Andrew Barth Feldman in real life. He is a short child of a man. I think the show I'd most readily compare it to is The Lion King, and that's the show that it should be looking at if it wants to think about making a journey to the stage, because The Lion King was a much more unlikely show for Disney to theatricalize in the way that they did. Beauty and the Beast had come before it, and was much more obvious in the way that they had put it onto the stage. They had a man in a clock suit and they had dancing cutlery and they just put it on stage with very few changes to the show's structure or anything about it aesthetically. The Lion King took animated animals and put them on stage in a mesmerizing and beautiful and artful and creative way thanks to director Julie Taymor. That was one instance of when Disney had a big hit by taking a risk. The other side of this is the shows like The Little Mermaid, where their biggest issue was how do we show people being underwater on stage? And they decided to go with Heelys that for the most part just looked like Heelys. It didn't so much give the illusion of people swimming as people roller skating with tails on. So you have to be careful how you adapt something and how you get over that barrier of suspending audiences disbelief. Puppetry seems like the most obvious option here to have either some little puppet Remy either being held by one performer, Avenue Q style, where you know that someone else is singing but your eyes go to the puppet, or you could do something very Marianne Elliott, very national theatre, where you have a rat that's being operated by multiple people. War horse style. War rat, if you will, or rat horse. You could do something with technology, where you have rats on screens moving around, not dissimilar to parts of the Ratatouille ride that's in Disneyland Paris, which is fantastic, by the way. Go, if you can, when the world's not ending. You could do things with pyrotechnics. You could do things like seeing the world from Remy's perspective, having some set designs being big, having others being small, and you can see what it's like to be a rat in a kitchen. Who doesn't want that? <gasps> Immersive production, oh. But there's a lot of opportunities for individualistic creative flair in terms of adapting this in a way that's exciting and allows audience 
audience is to suspend their disbelief about seeing the story of a rat next to people. I think that's the biggest barrier that the show has to get over. But to a certain extent, it also needs to work on the structure of the show and more memorable music. And I don't know how possible that is when you've got something where presumably the rights to its music are owned by multiple people because it's been written by multiple different people. I'm sure that smarter people than me have sat down and worked out how this would work for it to have already become a professional concert. But when you've got Disney involved and all of these different collaborating creators, I think there's some muddy waters about ownership and rights and who is entitled to what moving forwards. So to that extent, Ratatouille might be a little bit dead in the water. Hopefully the reputation that it has already gained makes it an exciting enough prospect for Disney that they will want to carry it forwards, because I'd love to see them take on a risk like this. Who doesn't want Ratatouille the musical? Then we can have other crazy Disney things turned into stage musicals. Cars the musical, Bugs Life the musical. They have the money, they can work it out. In any case, I'd be really excited to see where this project goes next. I think it has a lot of traction, it has a lot of attention right now, and it's a really exciting time for this show, which is saying something because most theatre shows aren't able to do much right now. Let me know your thoughts on Ratatouille the Musical, if you saw the concert, if you've seen the original TikToks, what your feelings are about it as a concept, and what you thought about the actual concert performance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel where there is not only more Ratatouille the Musical content, but plenty more stagey content about lots of other shows. Thank you for watching. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>